Good morning, everyone, and happy Wednesday. Today is April 15th, 2020. We are halfway through this week, so let's do a little review of what we've done so far. On day one, Monday, we wrote down story ideas for our realistic fiction books. Then, yesterday, Tuesday, we chose one that we were going to write about, and we wrote about the problem, the solution, and the flow of our story. And today, I'm excited because we are drawing the pictures. That's right, the pictures. And the only thing we're going to do today is draw the pictures. So for this, the materials that you're going to need, you're going to bring your organizer from yesterday, both the first page and the second page. Go ahead and grab that now. You're gonna need a sharpened pencil with an eraser. Remember, we are not coloring yet. We are just sketching the pictures. And then you're gonna need three to four blank pieces of paper, lined pieces of paper, or if you printed it, the ones on the screen. If you didn't, that's okay. It's gonna look like this. Now yours doesn't have the writing at the top. Miss Andrews did that to help you out. So if you wanna go ahead and take out your paper and write those now before we get started. And the reason for that is because your pictures must match your writing eventually and these clues are what's gonna happen on this page, okay? So in the beginning, you're introducing your characters and your setting. In the middle, you're introducing your problem. And in the end, you're introducing your solution. All right, let's get started. All right, now in starting our beginning page, I want you to remember that your pictures are going to help you with your writing, okay? They're eventually going to match each other. Now, I know when you read stories and when I read stories, I like looking at the pictures. It helps me understand the book. And that means that today you're, you're gonna be drawing details on your page so your reader understands exactly what's going on in your story. They should know who is who, where they are, what they're doing, and why, okay? All right, so I grab my, my organizer, right? I start with my name, so where it says name, you're gonna write yours, and I'm gonna write mine. Miss Andros. And today is April 15th, 2020. So the top of your page should look like this. Okay. All right, once you've done that, you're gonna use this as a guide. And that means to help you. So I'm looking at this and I'm looking, my character's name is Melanie. Now, what do we know about Melanie? We know from this that she likes going on walks with her dog. She likes hanging out with her friends. She likes playing sports and she likes eating pizza. She does not like loud noise, talking on the phone or beans. So this is the majority of what you're using for your beginning. So I'm gonna draw Melanie first. And I'm gonna draw her doing the things she likes, right? 
doesn't have to be perfect. Again, guys, it's not seeing who's wrong is better than who's. I'm gonna put Mel for short, and that's what they called her. I have her dog. I'm gonna add a little bubble woof so people know it's a dog. <laughs> I'm gonna draw a slice of pizza, pepperoni. And I'm gonna draw a basketball for sports. Now, notice so far I put a little heart for like loves, Mel loves. This is her dog walking, right? Pizza and a basketball. So far that matches what I have on my organizer. I'm gonna look at the second part of my organizer to my setting. That's it, just for my beginning, my setting. And in the beginning, they're in Boston, in Roxbury, and the season is fall. So I'm going to draw a tree, right? And I'm going to draw some leaves falling down. And... I'm gonna draw the buildings in the back of Boston, right? I'm gonna draw lots of windows. You can even write your settings so your reader knows. So I wrote Boston Mass because that's the city and state we're in. for our character, okay? So I have my setting, my character, and what she likes, okay? I know she doesn't like loud noise, so we're, I'm gonna write beep and put it X over it to represent one of the things she doesn't like, the loud noise beep. I know she doesn't like talking on the phone, so I'm gonna draw a phone with voice. And same thing, I'm gonna draw, draw a line Xing through it. She does not like that. And my last one she doesn't like was beans. So I draw some beans and I cross it off. So from this picture I can see that Mel loves the dog because it's not crossed off. Pizza, basketball, she lives in Boston. These are all the buildings like you see downtown. It's fall, the leaves are falling, okay? And she doesn't like loud noises, beans, or talking on the phone. I used all of the information from my organizer to help me with that. So go ahead and do your beginning. And then we'll come together to do our middle.
And Sam just forgot one piece of information from her beginning that she likes hanging out with her friends. So I didn't have enough space to draw my friends, so I wrote friends right here. Okay? All right. Now we're going to move to our beginning. I mean our middle. Oh my goodness, Sandra's. And in my middle, I'm introducing the problem. So I go back to my organizer and I read my character's problem. You're not making a new one, you're sticking with the one you wrote on your organizer. Okay, so mine is, Melanie is moving away to New York City after living in Boston her whole life. Now she's, I didn't write it here, but she's moving because her dad got a new job in New York City. So it's a better opportunity for a better life for them. So, I'm gonna draw that in my middle. I look at my second page with my setting to make sure I know where I am. So I had middle, they're traveling from Boston to New York. Okay, so she's, I'm basically gonna draw her leaving. Okay, so here's Melanie. I'm gonna draw a squiggle for a mouth because she's upset. I'm gonna draw her parents telling her the news that they're moving. And they're excited because they think she's going to be excited and it turns out she's not. Okay, so here they are. They're holding hands because that shows that they're on the same page about their decision. And we know that powerful stories have quotations, which are things people say, dialogue. So I'm gonna add that from both the parents. See. Honey, this will be a good move. A good move. And the mom says, I promise. Okay. And Mel doesn't want to go, so she's going to say, I don't want to go. I'm going to draw a couple tears. Okay. Now, I've noticed they're still in Boston at this point. And I write that in the first half of my picture for my for my my problem. So notice how I make it clear that they're moving because the parents are saying this will be a good move, I promise. And Mel is upset. Okay, that's the problem. She's lived here forever. So she, I'm gonna add that speech bubble and say this is my home. This is my home right here. And in this part, you guessed it, I'm gonna draw the move from Boston to New York City because that also happens in the middle of my story. She's upset, but they're still moving. So I'm gonna draw some clouds in the sky. 
here's my road I'm gonna draw the car and everything in New York is bigger so I draw even bigger buildings with all the windows and lights and New York has lots of sounds so I'm going to draw you know honk lots of traffic and I'm going to write NYC for short so my reader understands that this is the part where they're moving Okay, that's their car, they're all in it, their stuff is in it, they're on the road, clear skies, and they're arriving in New York City. All right, go ahead and finish your problem drawing, and then we'll come back together to finish our ending. All right, friends, we're almost there. So for our end page, we're introducing the solution. So I go to the second page of my graphic organizer and I look at my solution. Let's read mine. Her new friends from school, Carmen and Gigi, took her to parks and restaurants, helping her see the beauty in her new city. The lesson was that change is good and home will always be there. Which means that I have new characters that I must put into my picture because that is what I'm going to put into my writing. So I read my supporting characters, my last box. Carmen, who is a middle schooler, enjoys singing her own songs that she writes. Gigi, also a middle schooler, loves taking hikes and being outside. So I'm going to draw Carmen and Gigi first because I'm introducing them. In this top corner and I'm gonna draw them doing what they like to do again you can make boxes in your picture so I'm gonna draw Carmen and Gigi doing what they like to do here because here I'm gonna draw Carmen and Gigi becoming friends with my main character Melanie okay so I draw Carmen And she loves singing. So I'm going to write Carmen on top so we know it's her. And I'm going to draw some music notes coming out of her mouth. I'm going to write la 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 because that represents her singing. Okay, I'm also gonna draw a piece of paper and a pencil because she loves writing her own songs. Okay, that is Carmen. Then I'm gonna draw Gigi who loves taking hikes and being outside. Gigi, let's draw her short here. I'm going to write Gigi. And I'm going to draw her seeing what she enjoys doing. So like, I love being in fresh air. That's why she loves being outside so much. Okay. So there are, there are my supporting characters. So now my reader is going to know that there's more than one character in my story. So now I go back to my solution. I'm reading. Look, in my setting, in the end they're in New York City, Times Square, and the season is spring. 
Okay, so if it's spring, the sun is out, nice clouds, I'm going to draw grass, and we know that in spring there are lots of flowers, maybe some birds, right? Maybe like a bee. Okay. All right, so I have my setting. It's spring and we're in New York and they met at school. So I draw my school building. I'm gonna write school. One, two, three, A, B, C. So you know it's a new, so you know it's a school. I have my sporting characters, and now I have to draw Melanie. So I draw Melanie. And I draw Carmen. And I draw Gigi. I'm going to put a C for Carmen and a G for Gigi so you know who is who. Okay. Now, in my writing, I'm going to say that they took her all around, right? And so you don't have to draw that in your picture. But I'm going to say... As Melanie, thanks for showing me around. I'm going to add my speech bubble over here. Thanks for showing me around. And Carmen and Gigi together I'm gonna add their speech bubble down here are gonna say you bet we know home will always be home will always be home. And that shows me and tells me that they were excited to show her around and they know it's going to take time, but in the end, they know that Boston will always be her home and she can go back and visit. So, this is my ending picture. It's a little hard to read the writing because of my marker, um, but you're doing it in pencil, so remember it should be nice and clear so we can read your great ideas. Okay, so now I look back to my organizer and I realize that I've included all of my information. Okay, I double check my beginning my middle and my end and make sure as you look at them that it's clear what's happening who is who where they are and what they're doing tomorrow we're going to start our writing and it's going to match this this is all you're doing today after you, you finish this video, you're going to take a picture of your beginning, of your middle, and of your end pages, and you're going to upload them to Seesaw. All right, my friends, until tomorrow.
Thank you.